course, we hope many. So the idea is you tunnel down to about 300 feet, you find that first layer, that's all very exciting, but eventually that's going to run out. You need to find more layers. Simple, you just tunnel deeper into the ground. And then exactly what we did here at Ballarat, going down to a depth of over 3,200 feet. So amazingly, with pick and shovel, black powder as an explosive and steam power, we managed to work one kilometre straight down into the ground. You find those large walls, you have to get them to the surface. We simply blow them to pieces with black powder. That creates tiny bits. These tiny bits are gathered up, we bring them to the surface, but we now have to get them all out of the quartz. We have a problem. Quartz is an extremely hard material. And so to get the gold out of the quartz, quite simple actually, we take the quartz to that building next door known as the battery house. And in there what we have are batteries of large metal hammers that simply crush the quartz. Turning it into a powder like we see here, that powder and gold is then washed over the tables that you will also see at the battery house. By doing that we separate the gold from the powder but once separated, we can then gather up the gold that I was telling you about that we need to purify. That gold that we have to turn into bullion simply by removing the silver and copper. So, how does this all work? Once we have the gold, they bring it from the battery house over here to the smelting works. They'll pass it on to me, a person called an industrial blacksmith. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if I had time, I would tell you the industrial blacksmith, very much like myself, is of course a very handsome, suave, sophisticated, brilliant, intelligent, <laughs> and modest person. But I haven't got time, so I'm not going to tell you that. But I will tell you how I do my job. To purify the gold, as well as gold, I'm going to need a bowl, as we have here, a bowl known as a crucible. And yet, if you're wondering, a bowl made out of clay and graphite. We place the gold in there, we add a powder substance called flux, all that then goes into our furnace, we begin then to smelt the gold. Boys and girls, if you walk out of here, as far as I am concerned, this is the only thing you have to remember. Smelting is melting. And by melting the gold is how we make it pure. Now because I'm rather intelligent, I've devised a way of making you remember that phrase that smelting is melting. I do this by teaching you how to say smelting is melting in German. Now, I would just like to say before we start or go any further, if there is anyone from Germany here, I do apologise. <laughs> so listen carefully, boys and girls, because you need to repeat what I'm about to say. Smelting is melting. <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't sound convincing enough. Again? Excellent. Now, of course, you realise that's not German at all, but hopefully that will make you remember what I've just said. But I do have to explain further. To melt this gold, we need to take it to 1,064 degrees Celsius. And because of that very high temperature, as we're melting the gold, we're melting the silver and copper. Why do we bother? Because we know that gold is heavy. And being so, as we melt everything down, the gold being heavy will go to the bottom of the crucible. That, in turn, will force the silver and copper to work its way to the top. The silver and copper are then attracted to, and will stick to this powder substance, this flux we've added. They join together, they create a crust, yet that crust floats on the gold. We pour the gold out. The crust will go to the back of the crucible. The gold comes out underneath the crust, free of materials. Now we have pure gold. So that's how I do my job. Important, simple, lengthy, dangerous. Right, the gold's just about ready to come out of the furnace, so if you're sitting out there and you have a camera, if you'd like to take a photo of what's about to happen, if you do not want to do that, you can just simply sit there and perhaps take a photo of... Um... Oh, well, I'm just going to... Now, unfortunately, this does not take long. So as we pour the gold into the mould, a good time to start making pictures, and you do have to not come any closer, that's most important. Why? You'll see in just a second or two. So, you're ready to see some gold. It's ready, I'm ready. So here we go, a very beautiful, simple metal. We call it gold. I do remember 
say to the novel, not for the 1,064 degrees. It does. But as soon as we take the gold from the furnace or from a heat source, we also know that that gold is going to become solid very quickly. Indeed, a problem that needs to be solved. And we can do so by simply taking the gold to about 1,200 degrees, which, to be honest, really doesn't give us a lot of time. And there's your reason why. The gold now already solid. Gold, of course, is a metal, we know that, but truly amazing, not because of what we would think its price. The thing that makes gold amazing is simply its properties, the things it can do. One of the things that gold does so well is simply lose heat quickly, given a reason. This is because of what we call its ability to conduct heat, one of the best conductors of heat that we have. And because of that reason, that piece of gold lost heat into the base of the mould, a reason to lose heat, now roughly 900 degrees Celsius in temperature, which of course is still um, really hot. <laughs> now to let the gold sit like this, let it cool naturally means we're here for two hours. We do not have two hours, what we do have though is a tub of water. I intend to place the gold into that tub of water simply to show you something else amazing about gold. I do hope that by now I have not only shown but explained to you how we purify gold here in the 1800s. The simple answer is you melt. But of course it's not all that simple. I've also spoken of temperatures because I realise you sit out there knowing water cools. So therefore, if water cools and gold loses heat quickly, given a reason, that piece of gold sitting there now should also be quite safe to pick up. Question. Not that. Is it? And what we're going to do is find out. We're going to find out, however, by something that I do not want to do. A very simple demonstration. Yes, that's, that's it. About it for a minute. But I will also remind you that I did say gold will conduct heat extremely well. Being so sitting in the tub, the gold should have had enough time to lose more heat through itself into that water. Hopefully, you've been starting to study science, it's truly an amazing subject, because you see, scientifically speaking, that piece of gold has had enough time to lose heat through itself into the water. Therefore, instead of picking up the gold, why not just find out what the temperature of the water is? Realising if the water is the least warm, that will indicate the gold has lost heat. And it stands to follow if the gold has lost heat, it should be safe to pick up. I've also spoken of problems. There is one more. This water is still cold. Final question. Water is cold, gold is safe to pick up. What happened to all the heat? And you know the answer because I know you saw the steam coming out of that tub. And because most of the heat has gone up in the steam, water will cool, gold conducts heat extremely well. Three pieces of information that tells us yes, that piece of gold, it really was quite safe to pick up a long time ago. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we do have to finish, but before we do, the last and final thing is, I would now like simply to show... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I am disappointed to say, boys and girls, that that reaction tells me that 98% of you are sitting out there not even listening to what I was telling you. And even sadder, I have to include some of the teachers in that. But I do have a piece of gold here that is 3 kilos in weight. That is 99.99% impurity, so therefore bullion. A piece of gold also worth today just on 180000 Australian dollars in value. Knowing you're sitting out there thinking you'd love to get your hands on this piece of gold, I do have to inform you that it's not mine to share as long as it's original. They tell me with one sentence this is what we're allowed to do. Their words are exactly as follows. You are not allowed to let people hold the gold. Technically speaking, boys and girls, you're not people, you're school children. 
nothing is said about school children, they just said people. I don't have to be quick, but we've got another 102 school children to bring in in about 10 minutes' time, so quickly. One from each school. And I'm thinking, no, no, good putting your hands up. I'm going to show someone. I mean, school children. I'm thinking, oh, you. Yes. You. Now, you can only, uh, you can only hold this gold if you can tell me in German that smelting is what? Thank you. 